Uh, the, the question was about because I haven't had to deal with players that are getting paid. The NIL, yeah. That's completely a falsehood, okay? I've had to deal with players getting paid my whole career. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There it is. There it is. There it is. Yeah, yeah. I'll promise you yeah. that. <laughs> and I, in fact, I used to have a little saying. I uh, said, sometimes you got to go see a man about a man. <laughs> so, oh, God. Yeah. so, yeah, I've had to deal with that for a long time. Now, was it legal? No, but uh, I've had to deal with it. I, I, your question is really valid because there can be jealousies that pop up in there. And so that's, that's a different deal. That's a different deal. But uh, I, and I don't know how that's going to work. Because yeah. I, and, I, and I've thought about it a little bit, but. Yeah, I just I, I'm almost glad they're doing it now because I mean, you talk about stress. You go into a home, and then the kids, you know, we're getting this, we're getting that, and you're going, oh my God, you know, and then here I am, I'm, and I got to get this player. How am I going to get him? And so, <laughs> if you if you want to read something that's really, it's a pretty good read. When I was at Michigan State, I got involved in a deal in Memphis, Tennessee with Albert Means. He was the number one player in the country. He was a, he was a 260 pound linebacker. It was going to be a defensive end. And uh, ended up going to Alabama. He ended up costing a couple coaches of Alabama their jobs. But his high school coach was selling him. And I wouldn't buy it. I wouldn't get into it. In fact, he, he, he offered me the deal and I said, is anybody in on this thing? And he said, yeah, there are. He said, I said, who? He said, well, if you don't get in it, he said, you'll find out on National Signing Day. Well, I didn't. Well, the, that coach never gave all the money he got to the kid. And it was at Tresma High School. The coach's name was Lynn Lane. But he never gave all the, the money to the kid and his mom. So they got pissed, turned him in to the police. Because, I mean, you're talking about tax evasion and all kinds of stuff. And so the kid... I mean, they were all upset about it with, because of what I had heard with the conversation that got out there. I got a letter from, i never forget, Suzanne Nash and the FBI called me while I was in East Lansing. She said, we need you to come to Memphis and testify to the grand jury. And I did. And uh, <laughs> then I went to the University of North Carolina. And when all that came out in the media, I had to explain to the chancellor of North Carolina why I was speaking to the damn grand jury. And... Uh, because I'd done nothing. I was a witness. I'd done nothing. And then uh, then whenever they prosecuted him, the, the high school coach, I had to go back to the to the trial, and all of a sudden he pled out guilty and it's done. Then there's a guy named Logan Young. I'm throwing some names out there. If you'll Google them up, this is a damn hell of a story now. <laughs> but Logan Young, his dad was Bear Bryant's best friend. He bought all them kids in Memphis. And Logan was the one that was handing up all the money. Well, Logan ended up, you know, he was guilty. Whatever, they, they got all that stuff. So I go speak, speak at his, his trial. And I was what they call a rebuttal witness, which means I can just say yes or no. That's it. And uh, if anybody here is an attorney, you might be an attorney. You, you know what I'm talking about. And so... Like they said, did this happen, this happened? Yes. So I walked out of the courtroom, and I, somebody asked me, said, what was it like? I said, it's, I said, do y'all remember Perry Mason? I said, that's what it was like, you know, when, when, except it was in color instead of black and white. All you older guys, y'all remember Perry Mason? We used to watch as kids. And I pointed over to some of you guys, I know y'all remember. But so bottom line is, all this happens, he gets declared guilty, well, about, they're getting ready to sentence him, Logan, in the summer. Well, when they got ready to sentence him, all of a sudden, Logan got mur murdered. And one day, he was murdered. And the next day, he had fallen down the stairs and cut himself and bled to death. So he went from being murdered to bled to death, which means that somebody else was involved in this deal. Because he was getting ready to then, you know, plea, plea, turn evidence you know, to save his own, own ass. Well, I started getting these phone calls for two or three years, these hang-up calls. 
and I got them for a long time, and I started putting them little coins on my them the top of my car and you know marking my tires and stuff. I mean, I mean, it, it scared the hell out of me. But if you want a heck of a story, you know, t- just read the thing about Albert Means and Logan Young. You know, I was involved in that and by total accident. Did nothing wrong. So, uh, and that was, the, the SEC can get kind of nasty from time to time. I'll be, I promise you. So it's just Coach, what percentage of kids in a recruiting class is there a deal being cut for, you think? Out of all, like if there's 25 signed, what? you talking about the way it used to be? Sure, I mean, sure. Now, nowadays, there, nowadays there's a deal cut all the time because of the new rules. True, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, the game's changed with NIL, but, I'll, yeah, so I'll, back in the old days, yeah, the I'll, old days. I don't want to say, say that, probably, back in the day. I'd say probably half. Wow, that's a lot. <laughs> I mean, that's just the way that's it was. That's a lot. <laughs> just, that's just the way it was. That's why I ain't got no hair left, okay? <laughs> I miss. Woo! I mean, that's just the way it was. A couple know? Hollingsworth checks were cut back in the day. That's what I'm hearing. I, mean, I tell yeah. people. A couple Hollingsworth checks. I mean, back, back, it, was, yeah. it was the Wild West back then. That's what it was. Wow. Yeah. It was the Wild West. And, uh, I mean, that's, I mean that, there's, there's ways you, back then you could – uh, give a kid a car that was legal. All you had to do was have his parents, one of his parents, become a car dealer and tell him to go up here to the, the state auction, go buy him a couple cars at a discount rate because this might work at the state auction. You know, sold him a couple, you know, $20,000, $25,000 cars for about $100 a piece. It's legal. <laughs> and he sets them out in front of his house. Kid drives one, mom drives one, he drives one, maybe granddad drives a car. You know, <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. And they're gonna sell these they're gonna sell these cars to somebody to buy them, but nobody ever comes by and offers enough money to buy one. You know, and they got cars and then all of a sudden you look around and uh kid graduates, he's gone, all of a sudden the cars disappear. You know, you know, it's just it's what it was. <laughs> <laughs>